Hey guys, project number two for you today, which is this desk. You should stick around and watch me build it. Let me tell you why. I have a dovetailed case down here. You can store your art supplies in it whenever they're not in use. And if you fancy it, whenever they are in use. I drilled a hole in the top. Yes, I literally drilled a hole in the top. And you can put your paintbrushes in there. There's an indention along the back so that your pencils, pens, markers, whatever you name it, can just sit in there and they won't slide up and down the table as you're erasing ferociously. A sliding extension wing, if you want to call it that, over there. It's 48 inches long, 24 inches wide, 30 inches tall. I did do through tenons because, as you saw from the last video, I freaking love them. I think they look awesome. And tapered legs. So again, stick around, see how I build it, and if you like it, like and subscribe. All right, guys. So here I'm going to be laying out my tailboard I'm using dividers, and that's gonna give me equal increments. And I'm gonna create a pattern with these equal increments where I'm gonna do one, two, two, one, two, two. It just gives me a little bit more of a hand cut look and I like, I mean, I just generally like the look of it. You know, I don't want all my um, dovetails to look exactly the same. Whenever I start the cut for my tailboard, I create a small curve from the top. And then I put my saw in there at the right angle and cut down to the baseline. Yes, my arm really does move this fast. It's incredible. Once I get all the way down to the baseline, if I'm a little unhappy with it, I'll just check it. I'll use my six inch square, put up to the side of it. If it's within a sixteenth of an inch, over six inches, I call it good. In soft wood, you need sharp tools. It seems like, you know, you can cut through it easier with dual tools. And you can, but it just like, dents. You know, it doesn't actually like slice the fibers, so they like break out, if that makes sense. So you need really sharp tools. Here I'm laying out my pin board. I use a stair square to have two reference edges and the blue tape trip. Just marking them out. I like to try and fit my joints right off the saw. Um, in this case, you know, it's a little bit tight, so I just need a little bit of pairing, and it should fit together perfectly.
Also, if you were not a hand plane addict before, you do this once or twice and just look at the transformation. I mean, this went from, you know, saw to the kind of rough cut to glass smooth. Incredibly fast, no messy sandpaper. It's just, uh, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. Uh, I could, you know, pretty much do that all day. I absolutely hate routers, but this is just one thing that it does really well. Stopped grooves. You know, and a time crunch. You know, I was trying to get this done before Christmas. Uh, the stopped groove, that was a good option. And I was using the router plane because that's fast. You do not want these you know, when a glue up to be bottoming out and you going, oh crap. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a lead way. Fitting these, I'm marking them so I know which ones I fit them to. Pick it up, it doesn't fall out, it's nice and tight, we're good to go. Oh yeah, check this out. Put in that sweet hole I was telling you about. Put your put your paintbrushes in there. For my third mortises, I like to mortise halfway through, put a hole through, come at it through both sides so that it doesn't break out. Then use that router and with a flush trim pit and go around the sides and then I'll clean up the corners and I get you know perfect through tenons. It's just it's just nice. I mean I hate the router but it's just nice. I'm going to be applying a coat of shellac. This is de-waxed 
shellac so that I can basically put it onto the box and whenever I go to do the glue up all the glue will just kind of pop off and whenever I go to actually finish the inside I'm just going to use one coat of oil because it has this on there and then I'll put you know some wax on there. I am smooth playing the bottom of the top. Something satisfying about getting full width shavings, you know, out of a smoother. This was actually pretty fun. So I just basically chiseled some tapers onto the edge of the table. The front of the table got a 12-in-1 taper, and the back side got a 6-in-1. After I chiseled this down roughly, I came over it with the number 5 hand plane. Here I am gluing up the dovetailed case. So the runners on the bottom of the table, um, one side is actually glued with a screw, the other side has an oversized screw hole. And then after it's attached to the bottom of the table, I glue it all up and then I'm putting this uh, cubby case on it. So the cubby case screen direction and those runners run in the same way, so there's no issue with movement there. But because the tabletop runs in the opposite direction, it needs to be able to move uh, at will. I decided to do some dowel joiner for the bottom slider table. They're basically L-shapes runners uh, that it can just slide out on. So overall it took me about 30 hours to make this table, mainly at night. Hopefully the person that I made it for She's getting it for Christmas. Hopefully she really likes it.